Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. Um, I got this letter back today. Uh, I got a letter, it was a response I wrote Sister Megan Rice about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Just a support letter to tell her that we were thinking about her not to give up. We're still demanding her release and we're working what we can to stop all nuclear energy. And I was excited. I thought this was a personal letter and then guess what? It's not. It's just a a basic form letter, but I guess it's good. That means that there's tons and tons of people writing her and she can't write anybody personally. So I think that's awesome. So I thought I'd share it with everybody since it's not really a personal letter. So <clears throat> I'm going to read this out loud. Dear sisters and brothers, friends in solidarity to transform new global policies in favor of life-enhancing alternatives to death-dealing weapons and war by sustaining peaceful negotiations. Your outpouring of affection and concern in letters and action and your focus on the elimination of nuclear weapons by August 2015, 70 years after that first bomb, in response to that letter from a Brooklyn jail of July 28, 2014, have all been overwhelming. I have no idea what she was talking about, and I personally want the elimination of all nuclear power plants, not just nuclear weapons. <clears throat> so we begin by giving thanks. Thanks to Greg and Michael for their shaping of the action. Okay, so on this I gotta disagree. I don't like their shaping of the action. I don't know what action, but those people are sitting in jail. That's not a good action. They can't be out in the world, and we live in a fascist state, meaning it's pointless. Okay, back to the letter. So we begin by giving thanks. Thanks to Greg and Michael for their shaping of the action and content of the letter. To Annabelle Dwyer, Pat McSweeney, Ralph Hutchinson, yes and to Felice and Jack Cohen Joppa in Tucson for the collaborative layers of editing which produced it. They signed it from me, but I surely cannot take loan credit for that letter. So I guess we're going to have to go to the plowshares. Maybe some of you guys have gone to the plowshares thing and know what that letter is about. I'm going to have to do my homework on this. This letter is going to give me actually a lot of homework. Wait till you see. And thanks to you, each and all, for responding with unmerited acclamation for any one of us. It's not unmerited, Sister Megan Rice. You definitely deserve it, all of you. Clearly, we have collectively said it all, much of what we would each want to say, still minus the wisdom of many more. Surely the policy makers who will work on the transformation of that nuclear industrial complex... Okay. Surely... The policymakers who will work on the transformation of that nuclear industrial complex know on whom they can count for plenty of wise, creative ideas and willingness to get involved to implement that transformation with further research and employment for making new opportunities for all. As the Latin Japan said, if people can make the bombs, surely they can unmake them. To which we can only add, and make for us what our planet really needs. Which, frankly, Sister Rice, I would say we don't need nuclear at all. The only, the only transformation we need of the nuclear industry is we need research on how to counterbalance that poison. Because if we don't, we're all screwed. <clears throat> some, may have seen, some may have seen the book review by Nicholas Kristof in the New York Times. I wish to comment and dispel any possible myth that it may create. I did not see it. No true plowshares act of resistance can contain the concept of, quote, masterminding, unquote. By nature of being true resistance, by nature of being true resistance and nonviolence, plowshares action, plowshare actions strive to be the result of genuine communal discernment. And this, if faith-inspired, involves collaborative research, planning, enactment, and follow-up, in which we are now each, in which we each now are now involved. <clears throat> Ellen Barfield's 28th, July 28th essay, and you see she whited it out so we don't know the name of it, <clears throat> clearly alludes to these essential characteristics. So there can be no, quote, mastermind. 
If one reads the oral histories like The Girls of the Atomic City by Dennis Kiernan, General Leslie Grove's memories of in 1983 under the title Now It Can Be Told, or also Mary Palevsky's 1999 Atomic Fragments, A Daughter's Questions. We would see stories opposite of this kind of community discernment, the practice of an all-pervading secrecy. Exactly, Sister Rice. That's the 90% rule. And, and so I guess we have homework. The Girls of the Atomic City, Now It Can Be Told, and The Atomic Fragments, A Daughter's Questions. So we got three books to read to understand what these people were saying. We might even say the flourishing of some form of, quote, mastermindedness in the raw, unquote. Let me repeat that. We might even say the flourishing of some form of, quote, mastermindedness, unquote, in the raw. And 70 years of living in a state of denial of truth, as well as a state of planetary peril, creating constantly its own destruction. Exactly. Not only a state of denial of the truth, a state of denial of love of life. Because when we stay silent to these nuclear bastards, we're basically saying, go ahead, fucking kill my kids. I don't care. I mean, I did not know about it up until fucking Fukushima. I actually thought the government was looking out for us. <clears throat> In closing, I may add news of inspiring new hope. The Vatican ban for close to 35 years upon honoring Monsieur Oscar Romero of El Salvador, and I have no idea who that is, has finally been lifted by Francis of Rome. Both political and ecclesiastical forces of the, quote, extreme right, unquote, and in parentheses, BBC, um, in parentheses, had attempted to suppress Monsieur Romero's message. Well, I think they did a good job because I got no idea what Mr. Romero's message is. Uh, a prophetic voice on behalf of the voiceless poor, rendered so by the U.S.'s unrestrained efforts at controlling dissent, Romero spoke as the author in Deuteronomy 32. So that makes you want to go run to the Bible to figure out what Deuteronomy 32 says, right? <clears throat> they are a nation devoid of senses. There is no understanding in them. So maybe that's what Deuteronomy says. I don't know. May we give away our shared creativity and become poor that others be enriched. Well, that's kind of my plan. That's what I've been working on so far in the post-ignorance <laughs> post project. <laughs> so uh, all will be well. Amen to that, sister. Affectionately and in peace, Greg, Michael, and Megan. So that's the letter that I got from Sister Megan Rice and uh, peanuts from the, uh, you know, comments from the peanut gallery. So I got to get back to work. It's 9.30. I still have work to finish. So uh, I will talk to you guys later. Ciao.